is this one. Six notes. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. Basically, the technique I want to speak about is rest stroke. Rest stroke is whenever you play the note and you rest the finger over the string that is just above from the string you just played. So every time I play a string, I'm going to rest my finger above it. That is the opposed to the other technique, which is free stroke. Free stroke, uh, I would agree that it might give you a sweeter sound, but I believe that the rest stroke can, can give you more punch, more projection, and more uh, speed. So I like to um, practice that for those reasons. So here we go. There are two kinds of rest stroke techniques I like to use. One is a sequence of two fingers, and the other one is the sequence with three fingers. So we're going to start by uh, speaking on the two finger technique. It's basically finger one and two alternating. The first rule or the first important thing to keep in mind when you, when you speak about this technique is balance or equilibrium between both fingers. They should be no, one should be no heavier than the other or should have no longer of an attack time. Uh, what I mean by that is, is how long it takes from the time you start making the movement to the time the note happens. And usually that has a lot to do with the length of your nail. When your nail is too long, it takes you a longer attack time because the string has to slide all through the nail before it finally rings. So for this technique, from what, I've researched, from what I have researched uh, from great players uh, of this technique um, about the nails, is that the nail should be actually short, not, not much longer than the flesh right here. When you look at your finger from this angle, uh, the angle that I'm putting, before the camera, when you look, uh, you should see not much more, just a slight line of nail behind the flesh. Um, and that is because the, the skin is actually used in this, in this technique. The first thing that, that touches the string is the skin, and then it slides over the, the skin and finally touches the nail, which, which is where um, it uh, hits the string and makes it sound. Uh, so, um, Another, another point uh, on the equilibrium thing is um, you notice that uh, most people, I guess all people, have the middle finger longer than finger one. So whenever you play the guitar and you get a feel for it, you're going to realize that maybe you have to bend your finger to just slightly so that uh, they have this, the, um, the action of the nail is on the same place right there. So that's something that just basically you have to develop naturally over dealing with the instrument uh, many hours. When you play one note after the other, they should have the same volume and uh, at the nearest possible tone. Uh, if the tone is, is different, you should file the nail a little bit. Um, and that, that basically is the, is the balance part. Uh, the next point is a very important point. Uh, and I noticed that most teachers actually don't talk about this and I ask myself why, because I think in my perspective it's such a crucial point in, in the practice and in, in educating yourself uh, physically to get a good uh, efficiency, you know, a good uh, result from your, from your playing. This point is basically this. As you make the movement to play one note, that movement does not only consist in on playing that note, but also on preparing the other note, the other finger. So as I play one note, at the same exact time that I'm playing this note, my other finger should be preparing the attack on the other note. So right here, you notice that it's just over the, the string it's gonna play, finger two. Uh, so when finger two plays, Finger one has prepared to play. Now, now I'm going to play over the second string. As finger two plays, sorry, finger one plays, finger two prepares. And then as finger two plays, finger one prepares. This idea, uh, bringing this, uh, remembering this, or being conscious about this, conscient, I should say, uh, about this, um, is, uh, so important in your physical education, like I just said a, a minute ago, 
is crucial in my perspective because if you don't practice this way it's gonna take you like two uh, two intervals of time to make one note one is to play and then for the next note then you have to prepare the finger and you should do those two actions simulta simultaneously and uh, when you're talking about playing fast just that s s slight you know tiny window of time actually counts for a lot so here's how you should practice this it should be so slow so slow there's that there's not even tempo you just play one note and you have to sort of use your spatial awareness uh, like there are eyes in the tips of my fingers so that I, I can see the string and I can see that my finger is, is, is waiting in the air just above the string and then as I play the note I'm going to prepare the other and I should repeat this movement a few times more important than the movement of playing the note itself is the preparation for the next So I hope you notice what I'm what I'm speaking about here. You see that for every, it's like a person walking. If you want to walk forward, as you put one foot on the ground, you're already moving the next one forward, right? If you don't do that, you'll stop. So it's the same thing here. As I'm playing one note, I am focusing on having that next note prepared. Uh, the next point is a basically a rule of physics is the least amount of movement is, is what's gonna get you the, the greatest efficiency and therefore the greatest speed so we can go back to the same uh, the same perspective of practice here which I, which I told you to to play extremely slowly and sort of turn on your mental physical awareness as if there were eyes on your hands and what you want to do now is not only you're gonna move over the string but you want to move the least possible so that your finger is very close to the string just enough that's actually a little difficult and requires you to have a great physical notion of your body and how the instrument fits on your body the only point of con two points of contact that I have with the guitar here are my arm and the thumb on the on the in this case the seventh string seventh string but you should all also always um, try to use that, that type of perspective in your practice. As soon as you lay your thumb, say, on the sixth string of the guitar, you can already put the fingers on, on, the, on the three bottom strings, or three uh, highest in sound, highest strings. And that's sort of a, a muscle memory. As uh, You can use a, a physical reference from your thumb resting on the strings, and that's going to make it easier to find uh, the, the strings you want to play. So again, uh, I want to go back into the perspective of, of physical spatial awareness and I want to, as I play one note, I prepare the other, but just enough above it, not one millimeter more. And then when I play the next note, I have my finger, I wish you could see here with the camera how close my nail of the finger one is to the string. It is so close that whenever I want to play the next note, it's the slightest, the, the littlest, tiniest movement. Boom. So um, these are very important points that I've seen great teachers actually pass this by and sometimes great players uh, that do other things, play great chords and compose, whenever it comes to playing fast lines, they 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 don't have this so well resolved and many times I've seen is because of that reason of too much extra too much unnecessary movement what you don't want to do here when you prepare the finger uh, over the next string is to move it up too much like this and I have seen players doing this moving the finger too much and then obviously that's gonna cost you time and obviously that's gonna affect how fluently and how relaxedly also you can play uh, a fast line. Um, so another tip, a fourth tip on practicing this is to sometimes group, uh, you should use rhythm, should use rhythm and uh, accent the strong note. Uh, so rhythm is gonna be another uh, thing that's gonna pull you towards moving faster because you wanna obey or you wanna respect the rhythm uh, especially if you have that nature within you, which you know musicians normally do, is 
you feel the you you feel a subdivision and you feel a beat and you want to be right there with the music on the next beat so that's going to help you um and uh, another another so well let's let's use that as an example for example i'm going to use here a B minor scale from the tonic down to the seventh and i'm going i'm going to use just the, these six bottom notes here and i'm going to play them up and down and the point of this is to show the use of rhythm in the practice. Just the rhythmic awareness is already a, a great, is, your, is already your friend. So I'm going to play, it's, 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 it's not a musical phrase, it's just notes, but it's just to make a point. I'm gonna play up and down this here. First in uh, 16th notes. Ta, 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 ta. And I'm gonna accent one every time. Now, triplets. Well, tri uh, let's do six triplets. That's a, a good way to practice. The next point is, uh, so it goes together with this one, which is basically uh, whenever you think about a, a musical line, you can separate uh, three or four notes into just one group as if you were thinking one attack, but that contains a group, a small group of notes. And then you group these notes uh, together by the, by the rhythm, by the beat. You know, every beat, it gives you a, a group of notes. So you sort of group them together and think of them as one. For example, this, this line that I used to uh, play a lot uh, as a practice routine uh, from uh, Paco de Lucia's tune called uh, Entre Dos Aguas. The phrase is... Um, I just chose to uh, go use the open string E on the, on the way up and then use the E note on the second string on the way down just because it fits the hand a little better. Uh, the phrase is... One, two, three, four, one. I, I, I used to practice thinking as one group and then as another one and then and then so or or just two groups this could be one and then it's kind of hard but it's a, it's a it's a good way to organize your mind uh, in, in a certain approach pra practice approach Ready. Right. Um, now we're going to talk about super speed. <laughs> Basically, the idea is to use three fingers, and then there's going to be one more rule here in this approach. We're going to use the sweep technique. The sweep technique is basically to repeat the stroke whenever you're going up the string. The, sh the string just above. I'm going to repeat the stroke. And that should work with any finger, three, two, or one. So uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, invite you in a s series of several examples, sort of invite you into my practice routine. I'm going to just show you different examples that I like to do to uh, increase my vocabulary and, and, and have um, things at my disposal whenever I feel music calls me to play something that's more subdivided. Uh, and, and for music to call that, it also needs to be a, a question of language and style. Like, for example, in a jazz setting, uh, a swing jazz type of setting, I probably would never play this because the piccato, the, the, the subdivision with attack on every note, is just not characteristic of the language. Probably in a choro set, setting, which is Brazilian instrumental music, that would be more fitting. And especially a flamenco setting would be more fitting. Um, so here is uh, just one example to get the... the the idea of the sweep on three fingers. I'm going to play on an A minor Dorian scale here, a series of intervals of fourths like this. And I'm going to use finger three, finger two, finger one. And now uh, on the string above. So. That's not too musical of a phrase, but it's just to get you started on, idea, on the idea of sweeping with every finger. So now, uh, the first pattern that I'm going to suggest practicing this is your just very, very traditional pattern. I'm going to use a G major scale, three notes per string. This is the pattern uh, that I want to use. 
and the, the playing pattern with three fingers is going to be um, this is a very uh, very uh, common practice pattern but let's get started with, with it with this all right so what's going on here I have fingers always going three two one three two one and then as soon as I play the neck the string down and I go back to the next string I'm gonna sweep so notice how this works slower let's do it again here's the first sweep with the third finger continuing I got an another sweep with the third finger sweep with first finger first finger again well if I do too slow I I, I may actually mess up the sequence so I'm gonna start st stop speaking and I'm just gonna show you very slowly and uh, just notice how the sweeps happen here John McLaughlin-ish influence. Uh, uh, sometimes I like to do this, and depending on the idea, if I'm playing something sort of in the Indian context or a fusion context, it actually sounds pretty cool. Uh, basically, the idea is this. I'm doing this. One, two, three, four, three, two, one. As soon as I finish that sequence, I respond with the sixth above. That's it. And then the next phrase you start a fourth up because the guitar is dis disposed in fourths so a fourth up again again uh, the, how does the sweep work here finger three sweeps finger two exercise because it involves uh, the, the sweep point falls to a different finger every time all right um, another let's let's play another another um, pattern uh, this is a, another very usual very common very simple pattern it's just note by note you repeat Technique, but in groupings of three notes. <coughs> uh, in this situation, you actually may be able to achieve a, a, a faster subdivision. We just want to be careful not to use this too much because it's sort of a it, it's a giveaway. You know, once you use it, it's sort of like you're revealing a trick. So if you do it too much, then it's like it, it owns you, you know, it, uh, it controls you then. And you kind of get known by that and then people figure you out quickly and then it's, it loses the fun. So you want to use this like a, a, just that special fireball, just one song or two per show, per entire concert. You might want to throw this and then people are going to be like, what did he do there? And then you just never do it again. And that's the way I, <laughs> I believe you should do it. All right, three notes per string patterns obviously obviously favor the, the, the three finger technique. Uh, it's going to sound kind of dumb because the accent is going to follow the same note every time. I'm going to do triplets or sixtuplets. 
And then here, it, it, you kind of start um, some things that I have developed my, on my own. When I get to the bottom here, I don't want to repeat the same note. So I move my finger either down to the, to the scale pattern before or up to the scale pattern that comes after. <clears throat> um, and then you may actually <clears throat> be playful with this and use these groups of sextuplets and, and take the patterns everywhere as long as you're always playing little cells of three notes. For example, I can go here, I can move up, move up again, move up again, and go down the string, then go down, go up. Well, see, I, I went down and up at the same time here. I go down the pattern, but up melodically. Down the pattern, up melodically. So there's many different things you can do using these groups of three notes or six notes. Another one that actually comes from the electric, electric guitar is this one. Six notes. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. Can we practice this? Is just basically taking it very slowly. And for this type of approach, it's very important that you have your three note per string patterns all very, very uh, resolved. You know. Now I'm going to use the same example from Paco de Lucia before, but I'm going to actually, um, but I'm going to, uh, I'm going to use the three fingers technique on this phrase that I showed you just before. With three fingers actually becomes very comfortable. Change things a bit. Let's. Um, I'm going to suggest a, a jazz line over over a key so that we don't keep sounding too scale-like. You know, but this is a, a, a little phrase that I like to do a lot, sort of based on gypsy jazz. But I, I I'm using the three-finger technique with sweep. For example, it's just a little A minor thing. Again, here I'm using three fingers. Now, the last stroke was, was on finger three, so I'm sweeping. And then, uh, after sweeping finger three, I, finger, I do finger two, sweep three notes. And then now, finger one, sweeps. So there's three sweeps here that are very important. One here, another one here, another one here. to practice uh, phrases turning them around so first you if you start on the downbeat you end the downbeat also now if you start on the upbeat see how important the sweep is there it makes the phrase very comfortable uh, now I'm going to suggest another phrase on A minor, for example. There. First I'm encapsulating the third, minor third, using three fingers. Now I sweep, finger three. That's a sweep there. Another sweep with finger two. So, finger three, finger two. 
finger too swept all this, all these notes. That's a lot of notes. See, that's a lot of notes you're getting for nothing, for the price of nothing, right here. On other instruments, you might uh, go through a great deal of, of, of work there, but here, it's just one very comfortable movement. Once I get here, I swept with finger two all the way to, to C, and then I go back to the thing to finger three technique, three finger technique. I do finger one, two, uh, one, three, two. So we have from here on, you, you just fingers three to one again. Now here I already I'm already uh, barring with my second finger because I'm um thinking next that I'm gonna play the fifth here on E natural. So and this is a sweep here. Finger three sweep. Now I play finger three, I'm just close to the end. Two one. So I'm gonna do this the whole phrase very slowly for you. Again, using three fingers technique. For example, this is very Aldemiolish. Let's play something in G major. I'm going to suggest this. This is the pattern that reveals that you're using three fingers, so it's the one that I mentioned you want to be careful with, not to overuse, because then it gets tiring for the listener. But it's always nice to, to remember that you have that high card because, like, again, like I said, this technique can provide you great flow and very impressive speed. Now, again. Now I'm going to go the opposite. I'm going to take this to the string over. It's like a little game. There's so many little patterns you can come up with. I actually have never done this one. I just came up with it. Um, we can come up with anything we want.